The enemy doesn't care about children. He shelters behind little girls. Using Palestinian civilians as human shields is a common tactic employed by Hamas terrorists when launching rocket attacks against Israelis. I saw around 200 children. And behind the children, I saw three men, terrorists, put a Qassam launcher and launch a Qassam. The dilemma that I had as a commander, the only gun that could be effective to this range is a machine gun, and it's not accurate. Should Major Rowe Levy have ordered his soldiers to fire their machine guns and risk killing Palestinian children, or hold their fire and allow terrorists to send rockets into Sterot, possibly killing Israeli children? The end of the story is that the, I didn't pull the trigger. They launched the Qassam. Was it a right thing to do? These are the kinds of tough choices that Major Levy of the Golani Brigade and every other soldier in Israel's defense forces must face every day. The moral dilemma of whether to shoot or not intensified when Israel launched Operation Cast Lead into Gaza last year, after suffering through years of deadly suicide bombings and rocket attacks from Hamas. Major General Dan Harrell led the operation. You are being shot at from every mosque minaret, every corner on the street, from backyards of houses, from schools, they use the uh, civilian population as human shield. What the IDF confronted in Gaza was far removed from traditional open battlefield warfare between standing armies. Israeli soldiers now face paramilitary terrorist groups hiding among civilians in densely populated urban areas. This new kind of asymmetric warfare is not only difficult tactically, but also raises a host of complicated moral and legal issues. How do we distinguish between combatants and civilians in a scenario where the enemy specifically doesn't wear uniform or distinguishing marks on purpose? The people who give shelter to the terrorists, are they civilians or are they combatants? What are the rules we need to give our soldiers to allow them to be able to survive and practice humanity and morality in this type of battlefield. The IDF addressed these difficult questions by implementing a complex system of checks and balances that influences every decision a soldier makes in the field. Yonatan is a pilot with the Israeli Air Force. Adhering to strict IDF guidelines, he was filmed in a manner that protects his identity. I would receive a target and they would say, okay, you can bomb this, you are good to go. And if I would stall for a minute, the authorization is gone. You need to attack within a minute and you need to notify headquarters again 30 seconds before you release the bomb. And then again 10 seconds because someone has to visually look at the target and be able to say the target is civilian free. Most of the sorties that I flew in cast lead 10 seconds to bomb release, I was cancelled. Because someone saw civilians passing by. Even when their own lives are in danger, IDF pilots cannot take action without authorization. You fly over Gaza, you see someone shooting at you. You can see the, the bullets flying up. You still do not have the authority to shoot back. This is frustrating because what else do you need? This is a smoking gun. But it is true that I can't know if this smoking gun is standing in a kindergarten. I have no way of knowing. During the Gaza operation, extraordinary efforts were also made to separate ordinary Palestinians from terrorists. We actually phone people at home. 250,000 phone calls were made, leave your home and move west. 
radio station called them to leave the area of the fighting. Thousands on thousands of pamphlets were spread over the uh, Gaza Strip. And the fact that 800 out of the 1,162 casualties we know of in Kassel-led operation were terrorists, I think speaks for itself. Of course, mistakes do happen. It happened and we will do research and study and punish. If one of my soldiers will commit a crime, he will go to a trial. I will make sure that he will go to a trial. I don't need no go some report and whatever. I will do it myself because I believe that we need to be moral and that to sleep at night. It's three years in the army, but it's a uh, whole life that I will have to deal with something I've done. Israeli soldiers carry their moral compass with pride, despite the terrible life or death decisions they face on a daily basis. It is an impossible choice, I think. If you ask a mother of an infantry soldier that was killed because we couldn't give the response quickly enough, it wasn't worth it. But I think in a bigger, in a bigger view, we really did everything in our power to make sure that only those that we wanted to harm were harmed. It brings me peace. When I look back in the history of other militaries, other countries, the easiest thing to do and what they have done is to wipe the enemy out. That's it. But we are different. We are totally different. From one hand, it seems insane. But from the other hand, I'm very proud to be in an army that have this level of morality. And I'm proud of my soldiers.